Welcome to our World and News program. Today, we're diving into some fascinating topics that are shaping our world. First up, we're exploring how the United States has repeatedly failed to shift its focus to Asia, despite promises to pivot. This oversight has allowed China to dominate the region, and the clock is ticking for the US to act. Next, we'll discuss the power of international norms and how they continue to influence state behavior, even amid challenges from countries like Russia and China. Finally, we'll delve into the complex relationship between global commerce and international security, examining how economic ties can both stabilize and destabilize international relations. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these intriguing stories. Please continue to watch for the full details. Foreign Affairs, The Pivot That Wasn't Over the past two decades, U.S. leaders have repeatedly emphasized the strategic importance of pivoting to Asia, given the region's significant economic and military influence. With over half the world's population, six of the 25 largest economies, and a substantial share of global GDP growth, Asia is crucial for maintaining U.S. global dominance. Despite this, as Robert Blackwell and Richard Fontaine highlight in their book Lost Decade, the U.S. has consistently failed to fully commit to this pivot, continuing to focus resources on the Middle East and Europe. This failure is seen as one of the most consequential U.S. policy missteps since 1945. The authors argue that a successful pivot requires more than just reallocating resources, it demands a comprehensive strategy that includes military mobilization and deeper engagement with Asian allies to counter China's growing power. Foreign Affairs, The Power of Principles In today's world, where power often seems to overshadow principles, norms still play a crucial role in international relations. Despite ongoing conflicts and territorial disputes, norms guide state behavior and influence major foreign policy decisions. Historical examples, from ancient Greece to modern international treaties, demonstrate that norms, although often shaped by powerful states, can constrain actions and promote accountability. The current challenges to norms, such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine and China's territorial ambitions, highlight the need for proactive maintenance and reinforcement of these principles. The United States, benefiting greatly from the post-1945 normative order, must lead in upholding and adapting these norms to ensure global stability and protect human rights. Foreign Affairs, The Trade Truce? The belief that international commerce inherently reduces the risk of war has been a long-standing tenet among Western policymakers. However, recent empirical research shows that the relationship between trade and peace is complex and multifaceted. While globalization of production has a stabilizing effect among great powers, it can increase conflict likelihood among developing countries. The case of China exemplifies this ambiguity, as its economic rise through globalization now faces the dilemma of confronting the U.S. without losing essential global economic ties. U.S. policymakers must adopt a nuanced approach to economic engagement with China, balancing strategic restrictions with the need for continued trade in non-critical sectors. This requires targeted economic policies, coordination among government agencies, and a humble recognition of the intricate dynamics between commerce and conflict. Foreign Affairs, Democratic Peace Theory, the idea that democracies do not go to war with each other, has significantly influenced U.S. foreign policy for nearly a century. Presidents from Woodrow Wilson to Joe Biden have embraced it as a strategy for global peace and security. Despite the theory's popularity, the United States and other democracies have frequently engaged in conflicts with non-democratic states. The theory suggests that while liberal states may not act peaceably toward everyone, they do not engage in wars with one another. Historical proponents like Thomas Paine and Immanuel Kant argued that democratic institutions and values would naturally lead to more peaceful relations among republics. Kant's vision included commitments to peace and universal hospitality, which he believed would create security, mutual respect, and economic ties leading to tranquility. The theory has been empirically tested and supported by various scholars, showing that democracies tend to resolve conflicts peacefully among themselves. However, critics argue that other factors, such as international institutions and economic interdependence, also play significant roles. The current global landscape, with rising tensions between democratic and authoritarian states, seems to confirm the theory's predictions, suggesting that the world could be more peaceful if all states were liberal democracies. Foreign Affairs The rise of China has challenged the US-led global order, leading to concerns about how to manage this transition without conflict. Political scientist Graham Allison coined the term Thucydides' trap to describe the seemingly inevitable clash between a rising power and an established one, based on historical patterns. 
Power transition theory suggests that ascendant powers challenge the status quo, leading to conflict. However, the way the established power manages the international order can significantly impact the outcome. Scholars have shown that rising powers often accept many existing norms while seeking to change others. For example, China's Belt and Road Initiative, while criticized for debt trap diplomacy, is built on principles of global trade and economic growth. The United States can fortify its position by rethinking and strengthening international institutions rather than relying on ad hoc measures. By addressing issues like cybersecurity and involving allies in rebuilding the order, the United States can better manage the rise of China and reduce the chances of conflict. The U.S. needs to adapt the liberal international order to include new areas of cooperation and ensure that it remains relevant and effective in the face of rising powers. Foreign Affairs The return of great power competition, exemplified by the rivalry between the United States and China and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, has created a more dangerous world. Political scientists debate whether these challengers are driven by greed or insecurity. The concept of the security dilemma suggests that actions taken by a state to increase its security can unintentionally make other states feel threatened, leading to escalating tensions and potential conflict. This dilemma is particularly relevant in the cases of Russia and China. Russia's invasion of Ukraine can be seen as driven by both expansionist ambitions and a response to perceived threats from NATO. Similarly, the US-China rivalry over Taiwan involves complex security dynamics, where defensive measures by one side are perceived as threats by the other. The security dilemma suggests that purely defensive strategies and restraint can sometimes reduce tensions, but dealing with mixed states that are both greedy and insecure is challenging. In such cases, maintaining a strong deterrent while avoiding actions that increase the adversary's insecurity is crucial. The security dilemma highlights the difficulty of managing great power competition and the need for careful, nuanced policies to avoid unnecessary conflict. Foreign Affairs, The Credibility Trap The question of whether a reputation for weakness invites aggression has been central in analyzing Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to invade Ukraine in 2022. Many believe that perceived Western indecisiveness, exemplified by weak sanctions following Crimea's annexation and the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, emboldened Putin. U.S. President Joe Biden's assertion that Putin wanted to test Western resolve underscores the widespread belief that Washington must incur significant costs to prove its determination. This extends beyond Putin, as American credibility is constantly scrutinized globally, with adversaries challenging U.S. hegemony and allies questioning its commitment. The potential return of a more isolationist U.S. administration only exacerbates these concerns. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's defiance of Washington's requests for restraint and Iran's proxies' attacks on U.S. targets illustrate the challenges. Analysts argue that the U.S. must demonstrate resolve to regain its reputation and deter adversaries like China from contemplating actions such as invading Taiwan. The concept of credibility, particularly a reputation for resolve, has long been pivotal in international relations. Historically, Washington has even gone to war to protect its credibility, as seen in Korea, Vietnam, and Iraq. However, recent research indicates that credibility is more complex and subjective than previously thought. Leaders have less control over their country's credibility than they might wish, as it heavily depends on adversaries' psychological calculations. Efforts to rebuild credibility are costly and can backfire, as seen in the Vietnam War, which led to Vietnam Syndrome, making future interventions less likely. The paradox lies in the fact that reputations are beliefs about beliefs, making them nearly impossible to control. Policymakers must recognize that credibility is not solely in their hands and that efforts to fix perceived credibility deficits could provoke unnecessary crises and wars. The latest wave of research suggests that while maintaining a reputation for resolve is important, it is not the sole determinant of international relations. Credibility is influenced by various factors, including material capabilities and perceived interests. The Cold War era emphasized the importance of credibility in deterring adversaries, leading to policies like containment. However, post-Cold War scholars argue that analyzing a state's current interests and capabilities is more useful than scrutinizing past behavior. Recent studies have shown that leaders' perceptions and biases significantly influence their assessments of credibility. For instance, hawkish policymakers are more likely to view military mobilizations as credible signals of resolve. The U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan illustrates this complexity, as different observers drew different conclusions about American resolve. Ultimately, U.S. policymakers must carefully analyze their adversary psychologies and avoid being trapped by anxieties about credibility. 
foreign affairs, top dollar. The US dollar remains the world's most recognized and desired currency, despite the US economy's challenges and the erratic nature of its policymaking. The dollar's dominance is bolstered by the US economy's relative size and dynamism, as well as the lack of better alternatives. Even as populism and authoritarianism rise globally, economic and geopolitical turmoil often drives investors back to the dollar, seeking safety in its trusted value. The dollar's role as the principal global reserve currency and its widespread use in international trade reinforce its position. Despite predictions of its decline, no other currency has come close to displacing the dollar, not even the euro or the Chinese renminbi, which have faced their own challenges. The dollar's dominance is further entrenched by the US financial market size and liquidity, making dollar assets easier and cheaper to trade. Foreign central banks' demand for US Treasury securities helps finance US government borrowing and keeps interest rates relatively low, encouraging more borrowing in dollars. This cycle reinforces the dollar's global role. Even the rise of digital currencies and cryptocurrencies has not significantly threatened the dollar's status. While some countries are exploring digital versions of their currencies, the dollar-backed stablecoins are the only ones gaining real traction, ironically enhancing the dollar's prominence. Despite its strengths, the dollar faces potential risks from U.S. domestic politics and economic policies. The rising public debt and threats of debt defaults undermine the perception of U.S. government bonds as safe. Populist politicians have weakened the rule of law and the Federal Reserve's independence, causing foreign investors to re-evaluate their trust in the dollar. Washington's use of the dollar as a weapon through sanctions has also raised concerns among other central banks about the safety of their dollar-denominated reserves. However, the dollar's resilience is evident, as it remains the go-to currency during global crises. The story of the dollar is less about the United States' strength and more about the weaknesses of other countries' institutions and currencies. Foreign Affairs, the Progressive Case for American Power Progressives argue that after decades of costly military interventions, the United States should adopt a policy of restraint and retrenchment. However, this approach risks allowing authoritarian powers like China, Iran, and Russia to expand their influence unchecked. Progressives must recognize that American power, despite its flaws, plays a crucial role in countering regressive forces. A progressive foreign policy should harness American power to advance values such as political and economic egalitarianism, opposition to needless war, and anti-imperialism. This means supporting democracy and human rights, conditioning military aid on human rights conditions, and working through multilateral institutions to promote equitable changes. Retracting from global commitments could undermine progressive goals. For instance, reducing military aid to Ukraine would likely embolden Russian aggression, setting back progressive aims in Europe. Similarly, withdrawing U.S. troops from Syria would weaken the Syrian Democratic Forces, a key ally in combating ISIS and promoting democracy. In Brazil, U.S. diplomatic efforts helped prevent a coup, preserving democratic institutions. Retrenchment from global markets, as seen with the failure of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, can also lead to worse outcomes, such as China's rise in economic influence without labor or environmental protections. Progressives must balance their principles with pragmatic policies. While they should avoid unnecessary military interventions, there are scenarios where the use of force aligns with progressive values, such as supporting anti-imperialist efforts and humanitarian interventions. The United States should also support self-determination for subjugated peoples and reform international institutions like the UN to make them more representative. Trade and foreign investment should uphold labor, human rights, and environmental standards. A progressive foreign policy should be informed by the complexities and trade-offs of international relations, aiming to use American power ethically and justly to advance global equality and democracy. The clean energy transition is at a pivotal stage, facing a complex mix of challenges and opportunities. Political leaders are concerned that aggressive climate action could exacerbate existing geopolitical tensions and economic instability, especially in light of recent crises such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine and rising inflation. Despite these fears, the impulse to slow down the transition is misguided. Accelerating the shift to clean energy is crucial not only to mitigate climate change but also to address broader geopolitical and economic issues. The energy system is deeply intertwined with global politics, and a well-designed transition could reinvigorate economies, reduce protectionism, and ease great power tensions. The past decade has been transformational, marked by events like the pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which have reshaped international politics. Many institutions that supported the global order have weakened, 
and the transition to clean energy is complicating this already volatile landscape. Great power competition, particularly between the US and China, risks slowing the transition, as trade restrictions on critical clean energy components raise costs and hinder progress. Developing countries also face significant challenges, as they need to increase energy use to achieve prosperity while dealing with the uneven rollout of the energy transition. Poorly designed clean energy policies can impose high costs on consumers and threaten energy reliability. Rising energy costs are fueling populist movements and eroding support for climate action. Efforts to address transnational issues like climate change are further complicated by the actions of middle powers and the weakening of multilateral institutions. However, the future need not be as fragmented as current trends suggest. Policymakers can break the feedback loop between geopolitical conflict and the uneven energy transition by embracing ambitious, coordinated efforts. The Green New Deal concept in the US offers valuable lessons, emphasizing that decarbonizing the economy can address other domestic issues, such as economic inequality and energy security. Scaling this thinking to the international level involves crafting strategies that consider geopolitics, development, and national security. A well-executed transition can reduce global inequalities, create export markets, and lessen dependence on countries like China. Developing countries, despite their challenges, have significant opportunities in the clean energy economy. Investments in renewable energy, energy efficiency, and infrastructure can transform their economies. Wealthy governments and multilateral institutions can encourage private investment by mitigating risks for investors. Policies that support clean energy investments should boost local manufacturing, improve energy access, and ensure social benefits for local communities. Trade tensions are another hurdle, as protectionist measures raise costs and slow down the transition. However, a more integrated approach to trade policies could prevent further economic fragmentation. The US and its allies should broaden their economic partnerships to build reliable, high-quality supply chains. Carbon border adjustment tariffs, if thoughtfully designed, could also promote global climate action without exacerbating protectionism. Great power competition has motivated notable climate action, but it also poses risks. The US and China, despite their rivalry, must engage in dialogue and cooperation to ensure the success of the energy transition. Collaboration on environmental protection and climate assistance can stabilize broader relationships and reduce the risk of conflict. In conclusion, the clean energy transition offers a historic opportunity to create a more sustainable and equitable global economy. Policymakers must seize this moment to design a transition that addresses both climate and geopolitical challenges, fostering a future that is cleaner, more stable, and more prosperous. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.